Look at this headline. It's in the Washington Post. I'll quote it for you. Racist tweets quickly surface after Musk closes Twitter deal. Joe Conch is with me. Has Musk opened up Pandora's box? Is it a free-for-all at Twitter these days? Wow, Stu. It's as if there never was a racist tweet on that hellscape of a platform before. Uh, it's the best unintentional comedy out there. I mean, let, let's face it. The Washington Post is warning its readers about the dangers of a billionaire owning a media outlet. At last check, Jeff Bezos, one of the richest men in the world, owns the Washington Post, where, where democracy dies in, in dumbness, apparently. And, and now you have liberal activist journalists panicking over Elon Musk buying Twitter because you said it before, and you're correct, they've lost their ability to control the narrative. Censorship, locking out conservative accounts, that's no longer the norm. And that scent that you may smell right now, that's the smell of desperation, Stu. <laughs> In New York City, it's the smell of marijuana, but that's another story entirely, yeah. right, Joe? Uh, Governor true. Brian <laughs> Kemp, Georgia, and Stacey Abrams faced off in their final debate ahead of the Georgia governor's race. Watch this, Joe. Roll it. I did not say, and nor do I believe in defunding the police. He is lying again. Ms. Abrams on CNN got asked the question, would she defund the police? And she said, yes, we have to reallocate resources. I'm not a member of the good old boys club. So no, I don't have 107 sheriffs who want to be able to take black people off the streets, who want to be able to go without accountability. Joe, I, I've noticed that governor's races are trending Republican. Do you think that that yeah. affects uh, the House and Senate races down ballot? Does that the, the Republicans an, an advantage down ballot House and Senate? That's a, that's a very good question. Just to fact check Stacey Abrams real quick, I'm literally yeah. looking at the transcript from the interview that Brian Kemp had uh, referenced. Uh, she was asked yes to some defunding, and she responded, we have to reallocate resources, so yes. There it is in writing. She just lied on national, uh, she just lied on television in that debate in Georgia. To answer your question, when you look at Georgia, for example, as far as Brian Kemp being up anywhere from seven to 10 points on Stacey Abrams, you then have to believe that somebody's going to vote for Brian Kemp, and then when they look at the Senate race, say, you know, I like that Raphael Warnock guy, too. Let me vote for him instead of Herschel Walker, who is a Republican. And I just don't see that happening in too many scenarios. So if Kemp's up big there, or if you look at Ohio, where the governor is up big there, then a J.D. Vance should be the person that benefits from that. When you have uh, the Arizona race and the Republican yeah. in Lake, Open, opening up a lead there, then you would think that that would then trickle down to Blake Masters. So, yeah, the governor's races are going to have a profound impact on many of these Senate races, too. You got it. Carrie Lake really catching up there in, uh, in Arizona. Uh, thanks very much, Joe. Oh, she's ahead. Uh, yes, yeah, she's <laughs> ahead now. Isn't that amazing? All right, we'll yep. see you shortly, Joe. Thanks a lot.